Charlotte Corday. She is the newest to the very small roster of single target casters. As you can see here, we don't have that many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a free to play that has AOE scaling on a single target and Ari has a buffed MP and their damage is this piss poor. Don't use Medea for damage. Cersei, she is permanent. But unless you have double bitch and Oberon, you are not using Cersei the way most you would think. Mm -mm. Queen of Shiva. She is story locked, but she is arts and does decent damage. Especially in comparison to Medea. Like normally these days, like these single target three stars are comparable to like or surpassing the MP1s of four stars. Yeah, no, Medea's scaling is so fucked that's never happening. And also Medea doesn't have attack buffs. But we're not we're not this isn't a this isn't a Medea video. Two tank casters now in the evocation. So technically anyone can have a single target caster, but she has no battery and a lot of one turn buffs, so yeah. Su Shang. Uh or Sanzong, sorry. Uh she ha she can black row loop, very similar to Cersei. Uh, I think Cersei's setup is just a little cleaner, but again, I'm not used to using them. And then Ilya can bust her farm now. These two haven't come out yet, or this one hasn't come out yet. She is my favorite out on this list. Like I have the most experience using her, but Charlotte has a lot more advantages simply because she's an art servant. So let's get started and starting off already low base attack. Like the tip, the typical caster low base attack is it's almost always casters that have like gimped attack like this. Although for Charlotte specifically, it actually kind of makes sense why they put her attack this slow because going back to here, she has low base attack, but when you keep, uh, keep into a, in mind that with her super effective, which is a 50% increase in damage, that would mean her base MP damage would be around here anyway. And I know that I'm pretty sure that their attacks aren't as gimped. Hang on, we'll double check that real quick. So this is Cersei and Queen of Sheba. Oh, I have my breakfast, like literally in front of my keyboard right now. I'm trying to get this done before I start streaming again. All right. Nope, about the same. Is it going to be the same for Queen of Sheba? Yeah. So single target casters, they do this deliberately. It's honestly more impressive that their damage is as good as it is considering their base damage. They always gimp it. And then they also have the negative class modifier. So they do even less damage. They purposely don't want single target casters to be good. HP, it's okay. It's still on the lower end, but it's not super low. Like her HP is significantly higher. She's almost pu pushing 12K, which for a four star is good. It's just, I'd want it to be higher if they were gonna give her HP this attack that low. Cause it, it is lower than her competition, but she still far surpasses them in most cases. MP charge 0.53 with three hit arts, but she's rocking triple quake. I believe, okay, so if I'm, hang on. If I am not mistaken, this is actually Castoria? Yeah, so her gains are actually very, very similar to Castoria very similar hit counts as well so if you use castoria all the time you use charlotte you're not gonna mo notice that much of a difference they're gonna refund about the same which that's good you're gonna be spamming arch chains and she's triple arts uh we'll come back here in a second forehead extra attack that's unfortunate because her base stats aren't too bad like above 0.5 for gain and above 10 for Stargen, 
what's like the average for most servants i'd say like 0.5 sounds about right 0.5 points it's around that range and again th this is unfortunate but oh well i would say though that you're not probably not popping her extra attack too often because most of her damage is coming from her MP, not her base cards. So you'd want to just keep spamming the MP, and especially with her skills. You want, like, always have Tomo in the team, run her with Castoria, just blue until you're, the enemy is dead. It's not, it doesn't sound as good as red till it's dead, but that's pretty much her gameplay. Just click arts for every character. Keep spamming arts chains. Keep popping arts MPs keep suppressing fire all right first skill 30 percent arts buff inflicts confusion for three times to all enemies 30 percent chance to activate the debuff every turn and it's a 500 percent chance uh skill seal so this is different than normal confusions because most confusions they go away after they activate Based on the wording for this, because I, I'm pretty sure there is a difference in wording to this compared to like Domin, for example, or Astolfo. Yes. The uh oh confusion same, same thing. But terror one time three turns. I think confusion usually doesn't have this, but terror usually always has one time. So, if it activates, 500% chance to skill seal. I believe this can be resisted. Putting the actual debuff on someone can be resisted. This activation chance cannot be resisted. Unless they are immune to mental debuffs or... Uh, I don't think skill seal will cover this. It might, but being immune to skill seal is like really rare. I don't think anyone servant, any servant has that as an actual passive, like completely immune to skill seal, but they are mental debuff community, which pretty much the same. One attack, one turn evasion. So think of this like magical hats from Yu-Gi-Oh. That's what this part of the, that's kind of what this skill is all about. Like magical hats. Everyone's like, put under the hat shuffled and then your enemy's like what the fuck is going on point at that one there's no one there like what so that's or or the pigeon illusion from uh, other stuff like that because she's a stage magician second skill guaranteed uh skill seal or instant skill seal that's what i should phrase it instant skill seal when you pop this skill, you have a chance to skill seal. It goes up to 100%. This can be resisted. And you are going to be very sad if the enemy actually resists this. So, while she does have a battery in her kit, this actually, I feel, should be the first skill you leveled. Because so much of her kit relies on skill seal. If the enemy resists this, you are not having a good time at all. You are miserable because she's gonna do not good damage you also get more stars per turn which will help with refund good and static 20 percent mp damage for the party i'm usually a big proponent of like if you have a battery level at first it will enable you to do more stuff let you farm more so you're able to like get the bat faster this is not that the servant is not that she's not aoe she is a boss fighting servant and her battery is already better than most other servants batteries level this first you will thank yourself later lure this skill first over any other trust me this is kind of why you can get away with not leveling it because it's bigger than a normal battery it is 30 percent for herself and then you could target anyone else on the field including herself to get another 30% battery. So she either has a 60% battery or a 30, and you can give a 30 to some other servant, which for an arts team, 
this could be the difference of you popping a Castoria or a Tomo MP and you not doing that and you dying. So either save it for survivability or save it so that you can keep your loops going very, very well. And having a skill like this on the sixth turn, it really will help your rotations with Castoria and Tamamo. I'm saying rotations like it's playing Genshin or Honkai. Um, that it kind of is turn rotations at that point. Because then most of your skills are five and six when all of them are maxed out. So after one or two combo uh, MPs, you're back to popping skills. A battery like this, especially running with Castoria, probably is gonna have almost 100% uptime on all skills for every single servant. Any one turn buffs, yeah, you can't keep that up. But when you have that much arts, because all three of them also have triple arts, there really shouldn't be a turn where they're not popping art chains. So yeah, her having a skill like this is very, very strong for her. It enables her to keep having her cooldowns very low. Because that's the strength of the arts. You put, put up with Tamamo and your five turn cooldowns go from having cooldowns to not having cooldowns. You're always buffed up. It feels really good at that point. Like nothing, nothing feels worse in this game than in the middle of a challenge quest and you have zero buffs whatsoever. Like nothing is more demoralizing. It's like, why am I still fighting this? Passive skills, arts up 5%. Arts crit damage up 10%. She has no star weight. And if you do pair her with Tomo and Castoria, pretty much all the stars you're gonna get is gonna come from this. Uh, Unless you give one of them a 2030, which you probably should just so you have some crits because getting crits on the arts cards, regardless of what servant it is, means you're MPing quicker. Debuff success rate up 6% and star gen up 10%, which is it's because she was an assassin that she has the bonus star gen. She has a decent quick card, but it's not amazing. He's not a, an assassin anymore, at least. Pens, I would definitely say level mana loading. Don't, she's a caster. Don't bring her to fight an alter ego. What are you actually doing? Uh, she's not a support caster either. Like technically you are not doing less damage, but that alter ego is definitely doing more damage to you and your supports because most supports are casters or riders or assassins. Bitch, Castoria reigns. Why would you bring them to fight an Ultra Ego when your main DPS is also going to take more damage for them? Right? Like, why would you purposely go in with all of your characters doing, taking more damage and you only doing neutral? Unless, besides, unless your name is Millicent, in, in which case that's different. Uh, extra attack, not the strongest. Again, you want to be clicking as many arts cards from as many different servants that you run her with as possible. Honestly, do uh, Charlotte, Tomo, Castoria. Keep those arts MPs going. Remember when I said you might need 2030? Yeah, no. As long as you're spamming this MP, you do not need 2030. Run her on Prisma Cosmos. Because she can drop the stars. Five hit single target to one enemy and super effective if the enemy is skill sealed. Excuse me. This is awesome because this will affect your refund 100%. If you have it again, if you have 100% uptime on this skill and you're popping MP pretty much every turn, if not every other turn try for every turn if it's not possible it's whatever the 20 stars is going to pretty much guarantee crits on your arts cards because you have so many of them if you can put star weight on the arts cards too that would help out a lot especially for tomo that really needs the crits otherwise like her arts cards don't refund much 
yeah like this 20 stars on our servant is really really nice like vlad is like one of vlad doesn't have any crit synergy but he is a crit arts deep uh berserker because of how many stars he drops like it is not like guy the guy isn't a star jenner he's a berserker but he still crits real fairly consistently mats these are the bane of my existence and so is this it is painful and she needs bitches. Oh, 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 no. Oh, okay. Like, actually, my stomach is hurting, I think, from my coffee. But, like, also looking at these mats. Oh, my God, it's painful. It's the kind of painful you get after you drink coffee in the morning and you don't go to the bathroom yet. 60 bullets and 60 uh, spinal fluid. That, that's painful. Okay, chat, there is there is some genuine acting in this, and then there's me actually having to go to the bathroom, so I'm finishing this up quick. Party damage against skill seal out. Oh, I think that was just a fart. I'm sorry. Uh it might, it might have actually been a fart. <laughs> I'm leaving this in as a blooper just because it's funny. Because it fits with the theme. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I just had to fart. Um party damage against skill seal while she's on the field uh again if you have super high uptime on this your castoria and your tamamo are gonna do more damage she is on the banner with anastasia and okita there is nothing wrong with these servants they're all very modern are they servants you need to have so specifically for charlotte there's not much other options. It's either you get spooked, you summon for Ilya, or you go for Izuma. There are no other, there's no SSR single target arts caster. It doesn't exist. If that is what you want, Charlotte's pretty much the only one you're gonna get easily. Because you're gonna have an easier time getting Charlotte now than trying to get Queen of Sheba at any point. It like, Far none. Unless she is on rate up, you're not getting Queen of Sheba copies. Very unlikely. So if you want this gameplay style, summon for Charlotte. Or go for Izumo if you want a but very aggressive version of a single target caster. Like Iz Izumo. She is great. And she's really good in multi-core too. Especially if you're using Atlas, you get some nice stuff happening. I actually have to go to the bathroom now. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.